get this go back, 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 back. back. What's up, guys? <clears throat> um, yeah, you can hear me. Okay, good. Um, all right, let's make sure it's all set. It looks good. Cool. So, welcome to another stream. And today we have the rattlesnake design. Um, and we're just going to walk you through all the steps. Now, if you're new around here, what I've done is we have some nice, thick paper. Let me show you that. Let me actually grab the... So this is watercolor paper, and I think what you're going to want is uh, this 140 pound or 300 GSM paper. Um, it's nice and thick, it kind of absorbs a little bit, and the one I'm using is 11 by 15 inch, but that's just what we're painting on. Then I've done in just the design link down below also if you're watching on the website you should probably already see it available you could download that and it's in the right dimensions so that you could just print it out on a regular sheet of print paper and then all I've done is use a little bit of this spray adhesive this is the one that's like available at Walmart and stuff even though it says high performance on this I find that this has like a low to medium tack um, and it works really good for sticking the paper on and being able to peel it off. And again, we're just using this paper and this because we're just practicing today. We're not hoping to create no masterpiece or anything. This is just practice so you could follow along at home. And using just regular print paper and a couple of sprays of this is a very inexpensive way to actually uh, get yourself started. Now all I've done is after I've pasted it, I used a nice X-Acto knife and just went and cut it out. Now, on this particular design, you have all these scales here on the face. I put those in just so you could kind of get an idea of what the initial scales look like, but you don't have to cut all these out. I would cut out all the mouth and then the main portions, and again, I put all these stripes for the belly in going around but you don't have to cut those out i'll show you guys a way that we can actually use those but i did want to make note of them and you can cut them out if you want to and do it that way but we're just going to use a nice curve set so we'll use something like the the part of the real flame stencil right the the largest portion and we could just go in here and go and do those, you know, one by one as we go. So there's that. And that's where we're at. Now for today's practice, I'm going to try to keep it pretty simple. I'm going to use black, gray, and white. Um, so if, if you at home and you want to practice, all you, the colors you really need is just black and white. And then if you mix uh, a large portion of white with just a little bit of black, and I recommend just starting off with a cute couple drops of black and then stirring it and then maybe mix in a couple more drops if you need more. Always better to start with a little bit and then try to start in with a lot. Then if you get a really dark gray, then you gotta add more white and you keep on mixing paint. Start off with a good amount of white and then just add in a little bit of black at a time till you get a nice medium gray. Everybody's gray is going to be a little bit different. Um, I need a message create text about them offering just a, a regular wicked opaque gray. That would be great. Um, that way I could just tell you guys, get the wicked opaque gray. And that would be it. So anyway, we've got this all cut out. And we're going to start off with some gray. Now, if you have two airbrushes, I would load up the gray and the black. That's how I'm going to work it today. We're going to do gray and black. And then at the very end... 
at the very end we're gonna come back with some white and maybe just add a little highlights um, maybe we'll come back with the black and add some shadows you know in these areas here um, this particular design too if you wanted to you could just do the, the one side here then you could do this other second side right you could move it somewhere else so it looked like the snake is kind of going in here and then it would be going out somewhere else over here right so you don't have to put them side by side but just for today just so we save time and space and all that we're gonna do it like this alrighty so all that being said we're finally at the point where we could get to painting <clears throat> now I've gone through these a lot and we always start with the farthest away piece and in this case we're also gonna start with the pieces that are the blackest um, so yeah um, go ahead and look at the chat real quick what's up Thomas Thompson what's up RC Broneyard how's it going what's up Nomless uh, Olin White how's it going what's uh, are you are some on portrait yeah it, it does it takes paint very well it's very nice for practicing on what's up Dita Lernars how's it going what's up Stephen Buckus how's it going the wicked gray works well with coverage nice yeah I just I like I like the opaques so much so I wish they had a, a an opaque gray for sure what's up Michael McClung all right so for simpleness um, we're just gonna peel off these these main insert parts of uh, where it's torn in and we're just gonna lay in some black in here so we can start off with that now as always I do recommend you kind of keep these in case you want to put them back in and avoid getting overspray in there in this particular case I don't really think it's gonna to matter too much um, so yeah, I'll just try to be careful not to get overspray back in here. Um, there's these, and then there's this one bit right up in here in the mouth. If I can get the edge of it, there it goes. That piece, and then these, the, the pupils of the eye. Is it called the pupil on a snake too? That's pretty much it. We need these three pieces, these two removed, and then we can work from there. We're gonna just spray these in in black. We're gonna be careful just to fill them in. You don't wanna get a whole bunch of overspray everywhere and cover all your lines. Just kinda work nice it in. It's easier to just build it up in coats. Don't try to just cake paint in there either. We are working with paper, so light coats, light buildup is always something I stress, I think. I've had a few people message me before, oh, I've tried the paper, but then it got really wet. And it's just like, just light buildup is okay. And, you know, spray a coat, and if you don't get the coverage you need, maybe just go, let it dry and then go back and spray another one. Instead of just trying to just, I want it block right away, you know, so light coats. recommend you reduce your paints maybe 10 15 percent and maybe you work with a little bit of low pressure uh, 20 25 psi is kind of where I would be at um, you can go a little bit lower than that maybe if you're working with a micron or something you know more fine detail like a 0.2 or something you go 15 psi increase your reduction a little bit um, and yeah Honestly, just find a PSI where you feel comfortable at and you'll probably be good. Now one thing, I guess we could just use this as a frame. We'll just use the paper as a frame. I was going to try to like mask this off, but I think it'll be alright. Uh, so I'm just going to get just nice and light. And if it's not super black right away, it's quite okay. We'll go back. So just work it in there.
you'll notice I'm doing light strokes. So I'll move side to side. And as I'm going over that area, I'm just stroking it in there. I don't want to just sit in there and then just open it up and just spray because that'll just create a whole bunch of buildup of paint. Um, so it's always better to just kind of keep it moving a little bit. Just keep it moving, keep it a pump, keep it a move. Right, and we get all those and then just kind of go back over here, this guy. Um, See now it's now it's really black. So, what's up, martial artistry? How's it going? What's up, Bartholomew McCaffrey? How's it going? What's up, Chris Four Twenty Dragon? What's up? What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing today? Um, happy Memorial Day weekend to everybody. I hope everybody's out there having a good time, being safe. There you go. Just nice and easy. Just working that black. <clears throat> okay, so now we have that in there, and we're going to start with the face, we're going to try to get some of this in here, we're going to leave this bottom jaw in, but we're going to take out the inside of the mouth, actually, wait, <laughs> ah, um, we forgot the, the tongue. So make sure we take off the tongue and we also fill the tongue in with black. I completely forgot about the tongue. So let's get this guy in there. Just nice and easy. Give it a second to dry. Cool. Now we can peel off the inside of the mouth. And I think we'll switch off to some gray real quick. We'll want to leave the fangs behind. So make sure you leave those in. Yeah. that so now we have our tongue exposed we've taken off the inside of the mouth and we're gonna leave that and then we're gonna take off while we're moving we're gonna take off this whole bottom piece here see that you can take that whole guy off there and then we'll start back over here as well but I'm going to switch to the gray, we'll start working this in, and then while we do a nice little coat, we'll go back over here. And I also need to make something. So, very quickly, using the same piece of paper if you'd like, I'm just going to use this piece that we just took off. And I'm just going to make a stencil real quick. I'll draw it out with a pencil so you guys can see. Uh, there you go. Now, you guys have probably seen a bunch of these. And a lot of artists use them. I use them. Everybody uses them. And all we're going to do is just set a nice... U shapes. Now I like to do mines to kind of have like a curve to it. 
so that they're not perfectly straight all the time. And what it does, it makes the snake look like the scales are like raised up. Like they're not just flat, right? So it looks like they kind of have some texture to it. So something like this. And then I'm just gonna cut that out real quick. I meant to include that on the side of the, the original design, but I completely forgot until right now. So I'm just gonna cut that out real quick. Actually, take, let me take this over to the cutting mat. Okay, so cut it out real quick. See that? That's all we need. Our snake is not very wide, so you at least when you're doing this design, make sure it goes across, see like the thickest parts of the snake, just so that you can use that kind of going around. We're gonna use this to build up this, the scales of the snake, right, and we'll build up all the texture, and then we're gonna build up the design of the snake over the top of it work that in as we go so we'll keep this one handy you also want to try to again light coats on this is just a nice thin paper so don't don't get it super caked with paint um, okay so now I'm gonna load up my gray and starting off we want to give the snake some shape just stroke it in there, he says. <laughs> Put off fire in the grill so it did not miss the start of your live stream. Oh, no, don't do that. Do the grill and the stream at the same time. That's clickbait. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, right on, McClung. We'll see you later. Enjoy your racing. What's up, Aaron Safstrom? How's it going? What's up, Leandro Silva? Cool. So now I'm just gonna give the snake some shape. So I'm just gonna go around the outside and we're gonna give it some shape by just giving it a little bit of a shadow, following the edge. And again, this is just gray. Bam, real easy. We'll hit this edge right here where it's hiding into the wall. Go around this top edge right here. Make sure not to hit in the mouth. Just being careful. All right. Now we're going to hit the whole top edge of this mouth right here. From behind the fangs there. Now, if you've never seen the inside of a snake's mouth, their tongue has like this like slit that it slides into, right? So that's where this little... You can use a stencil, right? You can use like one of these. You can bring this in. And you line up the nice little U right there. And then you just kind of come in here. Almost like you're trying to add gills going up. Because it leaves a nice little raised indention. And then we'll go around that edge like that. Just making sure we get all of it. 
Now I'm just going to use a little bit of black just at the very, very, very tips here. So in this right here, right in this little pocket, right behind the fang on both sides, I'm just going to hit a little bit of black just to darken in that shadow right there. Just a little shadow right there. Bam. Bam. Nothing too crazy. Don't go overboard with it. <clears throat> right, now we're going to bring in our stencil that we cut. That we spent so much time making. Right? Our super... HD custom stencil right here and we're gonna line it up and then we're just gonna start hitting it in kind of going down now when you're doing this you want to line up the points with the peaks so you see right there how there's a the peak of the scale so the next one you would want to line up those points right under that and and we're just going to bring that all the way down. Now again, I'm working it in lightly. And then I'm going to start working different areas of the stencil. But I'm not just going to keep using the same little corner for it. I'm going to kind of start working this little stencil from all angles. Now, again, remember how I made you make sure it was curved? See how it curves around right here? If you make it curved, you can kind of start angling it in. So you'll line it up and then just twist it a little bit. And then again, line it up, twist it a little bit. Right, and we're going to start curving it to where the scales are going to get bigger on one side and smaller on the other one. I'm just going to do it kind of quick we don't got to go slow see that and just kind of bring them around I'm trying not to get in the way of the camera so much but there's only so much I could do My stencil is still pretty good because I haven't caked no paint on it. It's dry. It's nice. And I'm just I'm working it nice and easy. Nice and easy strokes. You don't want to build up the paint. Light coats. I'm going to keep saying it because I feel like it's... <laughs> So this is where you can work in your design. You can start working in your design of the scales, so the color. So I'm just going to work in some nice little diamonds right here. Of course, here they shift to the back side. On this side over here. Boom. And they come back over here. Right, and that starts working in the design of the snake right there. Now we're just going to come back in with some black. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I hit the bottom of this draw right here. And 
um, now I'm just going to come in with some black and just reinforce what we've done with the gray. I need a mi I need another airbrush holder on this side. So I don't have to keep getting up. <laughs> and all I'm going to do is just again, we're going to hit this edge right here where it's popping out of there. And then maybe we want to bring that shadow in, right? So we'll, we could bring in like the stencil like this. In order to give it more of a depth look, we can lay it in kind of like it's giving a shadow coming out of there. Bam. Then, same thing, we could work in the design. And again, with the black, it's very lightly. this round edge over here and then maybe we'll bring in a nice black shadow right here you can even bring in your stencil here and we'll make it look like it's because he's kind of folding over right so there you get the fold over but now you can really see the design of the scales now if you want to come back in with your stencil and maybe just reinforce some of the scales with just a little bit of black just a little bit. You don't ever want to do this, the black, because then sometimes it just ends up muddying the whole thing. But just like on this bottom edge, you know, maybe we just reinforce some of those scales just so that they don't get lost here in the shadows at the bottom. And all it takes is a little bit. You don't really got to do too much. See that? That's enough right there. Just enough to make him look like it's spiked. So. <clears throat> Hola, Carlos Castellanos. Bendiciones. Saludos. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Make sure our, our thing stays in there. Alright. So, now that we got that in there, we can keep it moving. Where is my blade? Where is my blade? Um, I know I just had it. What did it work? Vanishing. Vanishing blade. How? How did it disappear? Okay. Um, I need the blade. That's it. Cool. So we can keep working. Now we can take off this back piece up on the top. And we're going to work in the scales the same way there. All right? But we could also start working in this bottom of uh, the mouth here. So we can take off the bottom jaw now. Just come in with some gray. With you, it looks, it likes so easy. It looks so easy, probably. Um, your blade is on the cutting mat. No, it was actually over here, next to the airbrushes. Um, but all I'm gonna do is bring in a nice shadow going down from there. Keep this guy in place. Bam, right? 
We want to make sure we hit this edge right here on that stencil. And hit the edge of the fang as well. I don't think I'll use any black. I think just the gray is just fine. And I think we could also use a shield later on if we decide we want to make it more black. We could always use a shield. So now I'll take my blade. We can remove both of the fangs. Just the actual fang part, not the muscle that controls the fang. Hopefully yours is actually staying on. Because this one is deciding to... It has... It wants to go. It has somewhere to be. And all you need to do right here is just hit that edge. Just like that. That's enough. Now you can take it out. Now you can go, guy. Go be with your friends. Make sure this is cut. Alright, that exposes the top of the muscle. Just bring in some nice shadows going down and around. Nothing too specific right here. Okay, now you notice the scales on the face, right? Like all these little lines. This bottom jaw, I want you to go in here like on the side, get a nice little fine line. You're like, okay. And then just move that line in a squiggly. Try to match these little designs up here, right? And then when you actually go for it, make sure you clean off your needle, clean off the tip real good. Make sure your paint's flowing good. You're like, okay, I'm ready to do the line. Now you got a nice good little line coming out. Just come in here and just fill in that bottom little jaw with some nice little squigglies. Look at that. Just nice and little squigglies in there. Nothing too crazy. And make sure I hit these little fang muscles right here. Good. Then we could work in the top here. And we'll pretty much get this side done. So once you see this first side uncovered and pretty good, it gets you excited and then it just makes you want to finish. Um, these scales, they seem like really fun at first right but then when you gotta do a big snake and a lot of scales um, you need some motivation so in order to motivate you to get all them scales in there I'm just gonna start off with just getting this one side done and then you guys can unmask that and see that and be like oh yeah I'm ready for the next part okay so <laughs> again we're just gonna go back in with our little scale design here Now, up here, obviously the light's on the top, so maybe you don't have to hit it as dark. You notice I'm going kind of a little bit lighter. Bam. And then we'll put our diamonds right kind of in the middle right here. inside parts here now there's lots of designs of snakes so I would recommend doing maybe just a little bit of research on what kind of scales you actually want to put on your snake um, this is kind of more like a diamondback rattlesnake and then I'm just gonna come in with the black and we'll reinforce that same same way like before. Maybe I'll just hit the edges. Okay, 
work just like that, the nice little edges. Bam. We're gonna force the design a little bit. Oh, got a little darkness right there. That's fine. Just make sure the inverted section of this, you keep it. Because at the end, remember how we're going to do some white? We're going to come back and we're going to highlight some of these scales using the reverse part of this. So make sure you, you keep the other side of that stencil. Forgot to mention that. So now we got that, that part in. I'm just going to make sure to hit this edge right here. And now we can pull off our main section of the head. Now yours should not come off with the eyes. The eyes should definitely stay behind. So do a better job of cutting than I did. I hope your blades are nice and sharp. Uh, maybe I won't use them, maybe I will, I don't know. That one went right into place. the whole side too oh my gosh make sure that your inside part here stays in that place Come back in with the gray. And the same thing. Pattern, right? You see this pattern? We want to fulfill that pattern using the same little tiny line. Get a nice little fine line. Make sure you're ready. Then just come in here. So I hope you've been practicing your lines. Now, if you wanted to, you could also cut that out. <laughs> if you wanted to. I'm not gonna tell you not to. I'm just saying this. This is easier. And that squealing, that's the paper squealing from spraying right next to it. Spraying around them eyes real quick. I'm gonna spray this edge before it flies off on me. All right there you go. Now we can get all this, all this in there. At the very top over here, the tippy top of the head, we can start working in our stencil a little bit. So we'll work it in a little bit like this, right? and then we'll make these lines kind of start kind of matching up to those sh shades right there. Nothing too crazy. And we're going to dull this down with some white anyway, so it won't be too noticeable. And this is the only part where you really got to show your little, your line skills. 
And that's the part that's really gonna most people are gonna be impressed. Like, hey, look at all the little scales, oh, right. So make sure you do a good job on all them little scales. Uh, oh, jeez. I always the inside and mouth to look like female. <laughs> Okay, that's weird. <laughs> um, cool food, uh, lining up those scales for highlights sounds more tedious and painstaking than putting them in the first time. It's really not. And it makes the whole thing look like it's popping. If you just throw white like over these scales, you'll just get a white like smudge. But if you go in there and you just line up the thing, and you just give a few little of them a white highlight, it'll really look like those scales are more like glistening. So it's also a really nice effect. There's multiple reasons to do it. I'm just giving the, sh the eyes a little shading, making this brow, making them look a little angry here. And you bring a shadow right down the middle here. And again, it's all about building up shape. So you build up all them tones. <clears throat> we'll come back in with some black. I keep wanting to go walk back there and grab the airbrush, but I forget it's right here. And I'm just going to hit the bottom right here with a little bit of black on each side. Maybe we'll line up our flame kit that I walked off with as well. Where did it go? Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, so we'll line up some edges here on the eyes. Give the eyes a little shading. Bam. Boom. We build in his nostrils. Bam. Nothing too crazy. And then remember how I said maybe we'll hit that edge later. Now is later, so now we can come in and hit that. Nice edge right in the corner right there, and maybe on the other side as well. Boom. Then we can peel off um, what's left. So we can peel off this guy, this guy, and then we can peel off the bellies on this side. Have the belly is exposed. Now I'm just going to come in with a little bit of gray. And all you got to do is just come in and they're laid out for you in the design. So all you got to do is follow the design. Just hit that edge again and we build the shape in the shadow going up and around simple Man. and we just re go and do the bottom one. Oh my gosh I almost forgot about the bottom one We're just gonna hit these edges, just the edge of this, and you could even bring in maybe just a little bit of a line, kind of just some shading going up that way. See, and just make sure you hit that edge in both of these. And if you're crazy, we'll come back in with the black. And the same thing. Here we could probably get away with just throwing a little bit of black over this and just bringing the shadow up and around and that'll deepen it all up and 
Yeah, just hit a little blood, blood, just a little bit right up on that upper corner. Same thing down here, maybe just bring a little bit of black going around. But you really don't need too much. We'll hit this edge right here where it kind of goes behind the wall. And shade it out. And then if you want to extend that shadow that we did earlier, maybe something like so. So that shadow comes all the way down. And that's pretty much it. Now, you can see it's all there. But we can't really unpeel the side, but you can take this one off. Give yourself a little teaser, right? Oh, it's like, ooh, that's really nice. But we're not, we're not ready to unpeel the whole thing. But now you've got this all done, and it's like, oh, that looks really good. Motivation for keep going. For keep going! Ah. All righty. So same process, we're going to leave the bellies to the end, right? So don't worry too much about the belly areas. Right? Maybe I should move this over. Let's get you guys in. There you go. I'll try to hide that first beginning section so we could just move on to the next area. So we're going to start off in the very back. Now this is a tricky because it goes here. This area is, even though it's forward, this area is actually coming in front of it and then it goes all the way back and then the very tip of the tail comes back towards it. So the first thing we're going to do is actually this piece right here is we're going to fill this in, this very first piece in just a dark gray is probably good enough because that, that tail folds out, that the end of the snake the tail end and so we just want to make sure we get that filled in bam then we're gonna start working in our shadows and shades so we're gonna start with this back piece here bam start from there now you can if you want you can shade this in and then do the scales in I'm going to peel it all off, shade it all in, and then it work in my scales as I go. So I'm going to do gray and black shading. Right, so we want to hit that the rattler there at the very end. Hit the shadow coming off, and then hit the shadow off the top. And then we're going to hit a darker shadow just coming off the bottom right there, just a little darker. Bam. We'll come back in with the black. Switch back off to the gray. Lots of switching back and forth. Now here at the Rattler, there's this little piece right here. I'm gonna cut right there. And I don't know, I don't know if I even cut that piece, but there you go. And we'll take off the very tip of the, the, the tail end there, the very last bit. And we'll start there. So obviously we're gonna wanna shade in right along the edge and then I'm just gonna bring a shadow right along both sides there's nothing much nothing more to this piece it's just hitting those two edges and then I'm just gonna hit black only on that bottom edge Now, we're not going to peel this piece off just yet. We're going to start off by peeling off the, the main piece because, again, we got this piece that goes over here. So we're going to peel this off. We're just going to fold that over. Start off with some gray. And we're just going to hit it with gray going around, a nice little edge.
Make sure we get that edge really good. We'll hit it with a little bit of black right up on that edge, just black there. Not really worried about the rest of it just yet. Just make sure we hit this black right here on this edge. Just nice and easy. There you go. Now we can peel off the other end. Up here where the rattler is. Make sure we Now, on the design, you'll notice that on this one particular piece, there's a little line that goes over. So if you cut up to that line, and then we can fold it over right there. That's all we're looking for. We're gonna load up the gray. We're gonna hit that. We're gonna hit that bottom edge, but we're gonna make sure our stencil stays on. Was a close call. Like I said, that spray adhesive works really good. It's like a medium low tack. But if you do something like the 3M, the Super 77 or something, you're gonna end up like uh, sticking it on there way too good. All we're doing is hitting alongside that rattler in the bottom of that right there. There you go. Simple. We'll come back in with the black. And we're just going to hit that edge again. The edge on the rattler there. Bam. And then the very edge here. There. That rattler also has somewhere else to be. It's like, screw you and your painting. I got somewhere to go. And now we can take off this whole bit going around. Part of it is too that I try to be careful when cutting the paper. I try not to press down so much because I'm not trying to leave cuts in that other paper. So it's it's another good thing to practice. So just be careful with that. Alrighty, and we'll come back in with some gray. Oh. This edge here, bring the shadow around and up the belly. Bam. Same thing on the top, we're just going to bring that shadow all the way around. Now that we have all our shading in, we can start laying in our scales, which which have decided to take a vacation or something. Where the hell did the scales go? They were just right there. Oh my god. They were right here. They were right here. Well, is it faster to cut some out or is it, should I just keep looking? It's probably just better to cut some out. I know I didn't walk off with it. I know I didn't. Check my lap. What the? What's all that? 
none of those are the scales, so... <laughs> Did I stick it somewhere? Strange! Okay, well, I guess I'll just cut out some new ones. Yeah, I don't see it anywhere. Shoo! The story of my life. Where did the scales go? So, I really don't know where they went. Oh, there they are. I'll, just, I'll tell you guys anyway. So pro tip, right? So we still have the other one. If you do happen to lose your scales, right? And you wanna make sure you cut them out the same, just take this thing, take it on another piece of paper, say like we're gonna use this piece of paper, and just do a quick spray of it, right? So you don't have to redraw it out and try to get it the same. Just do a quick spray of it, take that paper, cut it out, and you have your scales back. So that's what I was gonna do, but luckily I found it, so I don't have to do that. Everything has a mind of its own today, man. Everything's trying to get away from me. <laughs> oh, oh, almost, almost did it again. <laughs> ah. Where is the honey blue today? I don't know. We're missing the honey. What's up, William Klein? How's it going? When, while there is hunger overwhelming, they're getting in the way of the TV. <laughs> yeah, go enjoy your barbecue, man. What's up, Bear Tracks? Well, how's it going? Uh, you want to be able to charge a fair price. So, um... <laughs> um, so pricing is one of those things where it's going to be very very subjective to yourself to your friends and your family and what you're going to be able to charge initially but honestly there isn't a quote unquote fair price it's going to be whatever price you are happy with now Typically, when I break down a job, when I go to give a quote or something like that, right? There's three things I like to keep in mind. Materials, time, and your own like personal, you know, motivation. So, certain projects Right? You might not like right off the get-go. So your own personal motivation is going to be very low. Right? But maybe the other person is super motivated and you know that could pump you up to where maybe you want to do the job even if you don't really like it all that much. Um, so that's something you could take into consideration as well. And the reason I say that is because you don't want to get into a project that is, you know... 40, 50 hours long. Like say you're gonna be doing a big mural or something and the customer's budget is not so great, right? But you wanna make some money. So, you know, you, you take on a project and maybe you're not, um, you're not making all that much on it, but you're, make, you're trying to get your name out there. You're trying to build it up. Right, and uh, this always happens with projects like I'm, you know, I've typically done for like charity and stuff like that, where maybe they have a limited budget, but the cause is good. It's going to something good, and right. So um, even though I'm not going to make that much money on it, my own personal motivation for the project will just supersede that. Right, like I don't care that it's going to take me so long to do it. Right. I still want to get it done. Um, other projects, it's not like that. It's just somebody, somebody wants something on their car or something, and you know, they come at you really rude, and, and 
even though it's something you like to do and want to do, maybe you don't like that person so much or something, <laughs> you know, so your own personal motivation is going to be really low. But then if they have a fat budget, I mean, again, maybe your motivation increases. And I like to make sure to emphasize this because um, a lot of people forget, right? You, you'll give a quote, you'll be excited about the job, and then, you know, four or five days into painting, you're just exhausted or, you know, you're just like, I don't know where else to go from here or whatever. And a lot of that comes down to, you know, you're just not satisfied in one way or another. And it's very important to keep yourself satisfied. Um, so whether that's monetary wise, so if you want to charge more and make sure that you know in the back of your head, like, yeah, maybe I don't like this project, but I'm making this much money. So you charge a little bit more just to keep yourself going. Other projects, you know, that doesn't come into play so much. So you're just happy to be painting. You're happy to get it done and uh, you, you go about it. In most cases, I like to charge a fair price, right? Um, and so I like to make sure that every customer coming in kind of gets around the same, like, price per hour is kind of the way, the best way to think about it. Um, so you think about how long something is going to take you, how much materials, you add that up, and then you go from there. Um, you might be able to play with it a little bit, you know. But be reasonable, right? I've seen projects where, like, I don't know, I could tell somebody didn't work all that much on it. But then I'll talk to the owner and the owner will be like, yeah, he charged me, you know, by the hour or something. And he charged me for, you know, 50 hours and it came up to, you know, five grand or something ridiculous and then you look at the project and you're like man that is not 50 hours worth of work especially considering what what you you know what you can get done in an hour right and it's gonna vary artist by artist but if you're at the price if you're at the point where you're trying to charge and get to your work you should be decently good and decently fast if you're still working pretty slowly and your artwork is, you know, maybe not the best. And it also takes a, a you know, you, you got to be a big man about it. And, uh, you know, look at your artwork, you know, from a, a, a customer's perspective. Like, are they going to be happy with that? Is that really, you know, the work that they were asking for and so on? Um, you know, am I really at that level, you know, and you got to be fast because if you charge them by the hour, but you don't get very much done by hour, you know, if you're just slacking or something like that, <clears throat> you know, you, you're going to have a, a rough time. So just keep that in mind. Um... But honestly, it's whatever you get the customer to pay you. <laughs> and you're going to be happy with it, then go for it. Um, but again, if it's going to look crazy on you. If you go and you charge a customer all kinds of money, and then somebody looks at the project, and you're like, man, that, that doesn't look very good. You know, and you're like, he charged how much for that? Like, oh, man. You know. And I see this a lot with like uh, real fire where, uh, you know, I've seen really nice hot rods, really, really nice hot rods. Oh my God, like super nice hot rods. And then you could tell they went to somebody and said, hey man, I want like some, some realistic, you know, fire on it. And then this person just took a stencil and just dropped it, stencil layout after stencil layout not even realistic fire just like those regular flame designs but they just laid it over and over and over and um you know you'll ask the person well how much was that you know how much did you pay and the person will be like you know five thousand dollars six six thousand dollars 
and you're just like, my God, like, you know, I'm very sorry if that, if that happened to you. You know, so it's all about being realistic. I try to be realistic with my prices. If something's going to take me a few hours. Hey, man, I'm happy making a few hundred bucks. Something's going to take me a couple hours and not that much materials. Like, yo, a hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks. Like, you know, you can't really go wrong. If you are at the point where, like, this snake takes you longer than four hours to complete or something, um, you know, you're going to have issues. This snake, you see me how quick I'm banging it out. You see me, I'm just working, I'm, I'm talking, but I'm also just constantly working. I'm not stopping, I'm not like, oh, let me bullshit for this much amount of time. Because I've seen that a lot, where I go into somebody's shop, and uh, you know, they're, they're working, kinda, but then the other part of the time, they'll just be sitting around talking to each other, not really getting much done. You know, and it happens a lot. And if you're one of those guys, you know, you should not be charging by the hour. <laughs> you should look at a project and go, yeah, that's going to cost you X amount of dollars. And uh, yeah, that's no matter how long it takes you, because just because it takes you long doesn't mean necessarily that the customer is getting more work for their money. Right? So you gotta like you gotta keep that customer's perspective. I'm not saying don't have fun while you're working or whatever, but there's a there's a limit. I like to work. So when I go show up somewhere and they hired me to do something and it happens a lot where the owners, you know, they try to make like a day out of it and they try to like barbecue and all this stuff and they try to pull me away from the thing that I'm supposed to be doing and I'm just like I'll you know I even just be like look man I, I gotta get this done I'm trying to get it done and not have to come back and work on your vehicle again right like if I get it done today there's no reason for me to come back tomorrow and you guys tomorrow could be working on on finishing it right like if I'm just there to do artwork or whatever Now, if you're just following along for the artwork, all I'm doing is just repeating the process that we used for the scales down here. So now I'm just doing the black little shadow parts, just maybe some little ones around the, the bottom here. But yeah, you, you just you got to keep it all in check. Keep your ego in check. You know, be reasonable because that'll get you a lot farther than trying to just hit a home run on every charge you make and be good be real about how your skill is if you're not all that great let a customer know like don't tell them oh I'm not all that great but if they ask you for something that you're just not prepared for just be straight up if somebody asks you for real flames and you've never ever done a real flame project before in your life just tell them hey I'm, I'm not the guy for that you know I'm let them know up front, like, I'm, I'm not that good at that. <laughs> so that at the end, we, you know, that customer doesn't go to a car show and everybody, like, looks at their car going, oh, my God, what happened? You know, what happened here? Do ever do a rendering first. Do ever do... Do I ever do a rendering first? Yeah, sometimes on some projects I will do a rendering um, I know some people are not very computer savvy though, so I can't s suggest that for everybody. But yeah, if, if you have the technical ability to do like a rendering on Photoshop or something for the customer, that's always good too. Alright. So I kind of followed that around. Now we're just going to focus on the belly parts. And we're pretty much pretty much done Zilla after that.
We could peel it back and we could add some little white highlights and we'll be good to go. See that I just hit that shadow off of that top one. We're going to come back with some black and we'll just hit a nice dark um, edge here in a second. But all I'm doing is going around and we're just building up, building up those belly lines. And again, they're laid out for you in the initial design. And if you want to cut them out one by one, you, you totally can. I'm just going to do it this way because it's, it's just as good and it's easy. a little bit of black on the edge. We'll bring in our stencil right here. We'll hit this shadow right underneath where that other one's kind of overlapping that one. You see that? And then we'll just hit the inside edge right here. Bam. And then maybe just a little bit of bottom on the belly over here just to blend that in right there. Bam. Nothing too crazy. Last but not least, we could peel off this last bit of a torn wall here and we'll just come in with the gray so even though the snake is practice uh, how much would you hypothetically charge so let's see uh, how long are we in we're two hours in or one hour and 12 one hour and 15 minutes so maybe if I was doing this uh, for sure it might take me a little bit longer right because I would be doing a little bit more detail into it and stuff um, and then maybe at the very end maybe I'll do a little bit of brush work with a, a regular paintbrush just to really set in some of the details and some of the highlights um, two hours worth of work you know more or less um, I would charge about maybe 200 bucks, 150 bucks. Um, if it was just something I was going to do for myself and then try to sell it later on, uh, definitely 100 bucks. I'd be more than happy with, um, and that would include the the canvas, right? So at 100 bucks, uh, you go out, you buy a canvas, you buy the paint, you spray it up, you make sure you do a really good detailed job. And you could sell that canvas for $100. That's kind of where I would be at. And there you go. We can move this guy back over here. So 100 bucks would not be bad at all. And there's your snake. Now, like I said, we're going to come back in with some white. So let me grab the white real quick. So a little bit of white. Now we could just use our insert of our scales right here, the other way around. And you could just kind of pick some of them. You don't have to pick all of them. But like some here, maybe we'll just highlight some of these. Right, just a little bit right there, just kind of that's where it's sticking out. Maybe we'll do just some right here poking out. They're already kind of bright, but maybe we just want to accent them a little bit. And it's all just about bringing up the scales a little bit just so that you really get that scale look. And then you can kind of just 
little bit of a highlight, just a little bit going around. Not too much. You don't want to drown out anything. Same thing up here. You kind of come back in. And you can lay those, lay those in right there. And simple. If you want to blend in a little bit of those um, hand-drawn scales, we'll just kind of shade them in with a little bit of white right over. Same over the mouth there, bam. Bring in some highlights over here. and just bring a little highlight around. Now when I do that highlight around, you want to be really careful with it. You don't want to muddy it up. You don't want to just cover all this up. All right? Just be careful. It's all about just really lightly working it in. And, and it's just anywhere you see the scales, maybe you just want to give the scales a little more definition. You just hit a little bit right there. There you go. Nothing too, too crazy. And you could even tone it a little bit with this if you just want to kind of bring in a little bit. Damn. Then we can come back in. Very last but not least, I'm going to use a little bit of black. here. So we're going to use this main piece to make a little bit of the shadows here for our piece that's ripped up right there. Maybe we'll do some of this right here. Bam. And then we could bring in the shadow of the snake kind of coming out of there. Bam. Maybe a little bit of it going back this way. Same thing up here, maybe we've got the shadow of the snake coming right out of there. Going back and around. Nothing too crazy. There you go. Rattle snake. Love to see that on a Mustang hood. Uh, are you gonna send out for a six pack this afternoon? A six pack? Yeah, no, I wish. I, I can't. I drink one beer, my guy. One. <laughs> That's good enough for me. I'll have one. I bet on a hood, the price would triple or more. Yeah, exactly. So if you're gonna make it bigger, obviously you're gonna spend more time. So you gotta factor that in. Also, a hood requires more materials. So keep that in mind as well. And there it is. Money shots. There you go. Let me take the picture for the thumbnail of the video. This is how I take all the thumbnails for the pictures, watch. All the thumbnails for the videos. Uh, look at me. I'm airbrushing right now. Oh, wait, you can't see. There you go. I'm taking the picture of me airbrushing the rattlesnake. Uh, where is it? There it is. There it is. Thumbnail. <laughs> so, yeah, guys. Thank you guys again, as always, for hanging out. I hope you guys enjoyed today's little tutorial exercise, um, how to, whatever you want to call it, just the hanging out. Um, yeah. 
that's pretty much all I got for you guys today. As always, thank you guys all for hanging out. Um, shout out to all the members of the Skull Squad that were in the chat today. So we had Thomas Thompson. We had RC Boneyard drop in. Uh, I think that was it. That was it. Uh, I know it's Sunday. It's Sunday, Memorial Day. So I hope you guys all having a great weekend out there. And, uh, and out there in the Earthland. Hope you guys are out enjoying. Um, uh, shout out to all the members of uh, the military and uh, all the families and everybody who's been passed and everybody that's out there. Memorial Day weekend, that's what it's for. So shout out to everybody. I hope everybody's having a great, great weekend. And we'll see you guys next time. Keep practicing your dagger strokes. And um, yeah. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, consider joining the Skull Squad if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the design. We'll see you guys next time, everybody. Later, later.